Hello, it's Phil Harvey here at Light Reading, and we are in Nashville for the Fiber Connect 2022 conference. Joining me right now is Sam Pratt. He is the CEO of Render Networks. Sam, thanks for making the time for yes, us. Yes, I am. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't this just a remarkable event? The energy here in the Expo Hall and just in general is absolutely astounding, Phil. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and the fact that we're able to talk over it, it says something about how excited we are, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, tell me if I'm speaking too loudly here, but there is real energy in this room. No, it's quite it's quite all right. Um, so for uh, those of us who are uh, new to Render Networks, yes. give us a little bit of background for our audience. Uh, you know, what what is it that you you all do, and then what uh, uh, who are your primary? Uh, well, what types of companies are your primary clients? Certainly, Phil. So uh, our primary clients are network operators and network builders. Okay. Um, and so a variety of folks from electric cooperatives right up right up to uh, well well funded listed network operators uh, we uh, render is a network construction platform okay and solution um, that effectively exists to deliver quality networks faster than otherwise possible oh, okay. um, and so we're a team of technologists uh, my accent and the company uh, was yeah, founded in, obviously in from, Australia. Oh, I was going to say Alabama, but Alabama, okay. yeah, right, yeah, yeah, just Australia. a little bit, little bit farther south. Oh, okay, perhaps. all right. I, yeah. I'm going to get uh, better so, at geography. So, Renda, Renda was founded in Australia, but we've now got people across five states here in the U.S. We've got customers across 19 states, and the main focus: you, what are our customers doing? They're building high-quality networks. Uh, and when I say networks, generally fiber to the home okay. um, plus wi wireless, middle mile, last mile type, um, type communications infrastructure. So this event, Fiber Connect, is really where we belong. Yeah, absolutely. Is, it, it's, uh, what is the technology component like of your business? Because, you know, is, is it focused mostly on, you know, finding efficiencies in the network build? Or, or how, how exactly are you helping them kind of um, get from, you know, get through the phase a little bit yeah. quicker? Great question. Uh, so the way that we like to think about a network deployment um, is in really three distinct phases. Um, from a scoping perspective, we have a solution that automates scope and construction task creation. Okay. Um, we, then, um, we, we then manage the construction activities. So we're, sco we're scoping, we're construction managing, and then folks in the field are completing activities and capturing the requisite data that's required in order to inform um, a best, a world-class customer connection experience okay. and very efficient ongoing network maintenance. Okay. Um, so it's really scope, construct, and complete is, uh, is, is a summary of our solution. And then you're, you're taking, I guess, what you learn from each network build and applying it that's right. some way. We're very fortunate. We've got experience around the world and a lot of a lot of very relevant experience in the fiber to the home market here in the United States around what a construction crew can do in a day with a specific type of technology. Okay. Um, the problem that we're solving for a construction crew, if we really think about what their motivations are, a construction crew wants to be as productive as they can possibly be. Yeah. They need to know where they need to go what they need to have on the truck on the way there in terms of fi fiber and, and what have you, and then yeah. the data that they need to capture in order to get paid and move on to that next task and next activity. At Render, um, we don't think it necessarily about delivering, delivering the whole asset. Okay. We solve the problem of what's the optimal task for that construction crew to complete um, uh, based on all the prerequisite activities being done. Okay. Eliminating rework and improving visibility and control for the operator. What um, what type of training is necessary for some some of these field crews when they're using your platform or when they're uh, because you know training is another big yes. uh, buzzword at this yes. show. It's a huge need in the industry. So what what do they have to know in order to make use of your platform? That's a great question. So the software industry considers you know, training under this banner of customer success. Mm -hmm. um, at Render, we consider customer success to really be network delivery. And so our training focus is on people in the office that are using our technology platform in order to allocate and release tasks to field crews, um, but then also to um, the guys and gals in the field that are, that are in the construction crews 
uh, that are using our mobile technology to understand where they need to go and the work that they need to do. The training component is something that um, is generally a mental barrier more than it is a realistic barrier. Okay. If we think about uh, uh. folks uh, uh, just in our general and day life, yourself and I, Phil, in order to find this stage here, we use geospatial technology. Right. It's the same for everyone. Really what we're doing at Render is we're bringing geospatial technology into the construction domain and we're providing uh, construction crews with a solution that eliminates all paper and other manual forms of communication, even SMS and phone calls and emails, interrogating file shares. You don't need to do that if you have, um, if you have a, a construction solution um, like ours. Okay. Um, you mentioned you were working with uh, electrical cooperatives in the U.S. Yes. Those are interesting to me because they tend to be, um, you know, uh, well, just kind of a, 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 an emerging type of carrier, and yes. a lot of them are covering some of these critical markets in rural areas that are, yes, they are. are historically underserved. Absolutely. Um, what specifically are you able to do for those kinds of companies? I think if we think about just the nature of an electrical cooperative, well, their history is in electricity. Yeah. And, and those networks have been built organically over many, many decades. Yeah. Um, the, they're also very, strate very well strategically positioned and membership focused mm -hmm. um, in order to deliver fiber. Uh, and administering electricity and administering fiber, there's a reason why what is happening in the industry is happening and electric cooperatives are so well positioned to, to solve that problem. Um, in terms of what we can do, uh, we can bring subject matter expertise to the table uh, okay. and, and we can bring a methodology and, and, a, and an approach to really solve the problem of how to deliver the network with technology. Okay. What we find is that the electric cooperative space is actually, they're actually some of the most forward thinking um, folks that we come across in the industry from tier one right, right through to rural electric cooperatives. And it's that focus on the member and focus on the customer connection experience and that focus on customer service um, that lends them to look at technology solutions where perhaps other operators do not. Okay, that makes sense. Um, let's talk about Render as a company. You, sure. you took on um, a new investor recently. We did, uh, we did. What was it, that was like a $40 million stake. That's And correct. can you tell me a little bit about the, the investor and then what, that, what sort of opportunities that affords for the company? Absolutely, so IFM Investors is a global infrastructure investor. Okay. And if we think about the, na the nature of telecommunications infrastructure, it's, 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 it's the next evolution of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, so IFM has telecommunication assets, but also real assets all over the world. Okay. Um, IFM Investors Growth Equity Fund has taken uh, a, a majority stake in the render business, really to partner with management and our existing founders to accelerate the path that we're already on um, and that is to build technology that enables high quality networks to be delivered faster than otherwise possible so we're really excited about what it can do um, on, on from a number of perspectives um, but primarily for the folks here at fiber connect it's our ability now to be able to deliver features and capability faster than other would otherwise be possible and also to fully resource our US focus team here um, to take advantage of the opportunity that the whole industry is benefiting from right now. Um, the funding from a private market perspective uh, is, is, is significant and then also there's, there's the, the government-led infrastructure investment and the BEAD program um, yeah. that's right on the horizon and you, you guys at, at Light Reading know all about that. Yeah, of course. That's what I was going to ask you too. Is, is, is there anything specific that you're able to uh, sort of project for your company when it comes to, you know, when this money starts rolling in, you sure. know, to the providers? It, you know, it's going to be administered by the state, so obviously it's going to vary from place to yes. place, but how as a, as a CEO of a business, how are you kind of planning for that inevitability? Look, it's, it's a great question. I think the market has already been so buoyant on the back of the last couple of years, if you will, Phil. Yeah. The awareness of the need for connectivity is just palpable. Um, so the bead funding is, is great. Um, it, it's, it's not why we're here. We're really here to partner with the industry to do things as efficiently as possible. Mm -hmm. um, funding aside, right now the supply chain constraints are real. Yeah. What a technology enabled approach like ours, ours at Render does is really optimise flexibility, 
and improves visibility and control. And so with a flexible approach, um, if materials are not available, if we have labour constraints, right. then we can focus our finite resources, our finite materials uh, on the activities that are going to have the most impact. Um, and so that's, that's what we're excited about. Um, funding, although it's on the horizon, um, has already arrived from the, uh, the, the private market. Okay. So there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of private market investment that's already here. Uh, I would assert that in 2022, 2023, we're at peak deployment right now. We're already seeing some acute um, shortages in terms of labour and supply chain. Yeah. So it's likely that that will continue. Uh, and compared to prior to the pandemic, I think the appetite to invest in technology-led efficiency um, is real right now. It's no longer an early adopter market. Right. Do you think the, the, uh, the su supply chain will ease a little bit if the economy contracts? I mean, you know, that, that maybe maybe give it give us a chance to catch up a little bit. All else equal. I think that's the case. Um, yeah. But as you pointed out, with the with with the avalanche of funding that's on the on the horizon, yeah. um, we need to be ready to deal with these ongoing this ongoing level of uncertainty um, for some time yet. All right, great. Well, I'll let you get back to it and, and add to the energy in the room here. Uh, Sam, thanks so much. It was, it was great talking Thank to you. Thank you so much. A real pleasure and appreciate everything that you do at Light Rating.